the range office uh, before you go to your bench and that, that cover will be, will be cleaned. Uh, we're also trusting individuals uh, to be careful uh, around things that we use jointly, uh, pens and staplers and target frames. Uh, we would hope everybody has hand sanitizer with them and uses it. Uh, we trust you with guns. We're going to trust you with personal uh, safety in this area as well. And the other thing we're going to do is under some cir circumstances, we're going to ask all users to wear masks. Now, if you're more than uh, 10 feet apart, if there's only two of us on the rifle deck at any time, clearly you don't have to wear a mask. But if we have a busy day and everybody's within six feet of each other, then we are going to ask that people, uh, people wear masks. So a lot of this is common sense. It's not new to people who are around firearms all their lives to, to uh, be aware of and honor safety requirements. But the goal here is to open as quickly we can uh, to do so safely and to obey all laws and regulations while we're doing that. And hopefully that will be May 1. Thank you, Jake. Or Reverend Bott, do you have anything to add? No, I thank you. Uh, thank you. Summed it up well, Hank. Thank you. Okay, great. If um, we can just talk uh, about the existing projects and kind of what we're doing going forward, then the next step we'll get into some member questions. So, Mark, if you wouldn't mind uh, talking about the restrooms and, and where we're at with the with those. The uh, leaks in the wall uh, in the men's room. Uh, which is the left-hand bathroom. And then uh, the plumber was out yesterday and was able to patch that one. Meanwhile, he found two or three more, uh, got those done. Those are repaired. And uh, talking with Jim this morning, things were still holding pressure. So I think we're good on that. We've got some drywall to repair. And then uh, we need to replace the uh, inline water heaters, which were not going to work, but they did freeze and crack. So we're getting two new uh, two and a half gallon small water heaters to go one in each bathroom. Uh, those run off 110 power and they'll be more than sufficient for those uh, sinks. So a couple of steps to them and we should be able to start using those when we reopen. Now we're still gonna put a covering over it for the winter for next year so we don't have that freeze problem. Um, but otherwise, I hope to have those up and running, hopefully, when we reopen. Great. Thanks, Mark. And then, uh, Reverend Bott, would you, I uh, think you, you got a lot of uh, irons in the fire with the range, so the water line, trees, the block work, drainage work, so anything else that, uh, that you might think of? Okay. Thank you, Jake. Um, the water line, uh, so th this is the uh, rerouting of the water line that, that services the, the uh, range master's house. And um, the county decided to uh, replace the water line. And uh, instead of replacing it near or in proximity to where the old line was, they're going to line bore um, across the rifle bay underground about uh, about the 250 200 yard line ish and uh, then they will bring it back around that going with the four inch line because the um, the um, compost system that they put in uh, requires up to 50,000 gallons a day because Garbage doesn't decompose well enough in Teton County. So they're, then, then they will refeed the line to the house and um, they have uh, been, as you might expect, lots of fun to work with. And the, uh, the time frame is uh, still up in the air. The, they had a bidder's inspection on the 9th of April and um, but they can't get to a portion of the project until June 1st, because that's when the sensitive, um, sensitive habitat uh, restriction allows
people to come on to the area where they need to get to to attach to the well. So at some point, the county will need to close down the rifle range and uh, well, all of them, everything. Um, and uh, while they bore underground because boring requires uh, access pits along the way. And um, so uh, they were told that it would be only 10 to 14 days uh, to bore this, um, whatever the, the length is, 800 yards or however long their, their, their boring is. And um, so they don't know when it will be. And um, they will let us know uh, when they are going to need access. Um, the county has also told us um, just a, an increasing amount of restriction. Um, they want an, uh, an MOU, uh, a memo of understanding with the gun club uh, to provide them access when, whenever they need it. And um, then they told us they, they want to put in a meter uh, on our water usage, but promised that it would not charge us and then until they decided that they're going to charge us. And the amount of they're going to charge us is undetermined at this point, um, but they will put that in the MOU when they develop that MOU. And I, pressed for how much they're going to charge. They would offer nothing. And uh, uh, that would, that, that's just to be determined by them at some date in the future. Um, the good news is um, we have a landlord in the Game and Fish that is thrilled to death with the Jackson Hole Gun Club operating the gun range. And the county gets nothing unless the Game and Fish says so. And the Game and Fish, speaking with Brian Rogan in the lander office, he's the guy in charge of all of the uh, land for the Game and Fish in this part of the state. And he said, well, we won't, we won't allow a memo of understanding to be signed unless the gun range is happy with, with the conditions. And he said, they don't have to come through the gun range to get to their well they can go through Game Creek. So, so they got that going for them. Um, so uh, we will get that out to you just as, as soon as we have any information on it. And please understand, it's going to be a construction project. And the, date, the dates are going to be moving targets. So um, please understand that it might get changed, but not by, our, not by the board's doing. Uh, we're literally at the mercy of the county on this one. So, um, concrete block work, uh, the, the terracing that you've seen going, we have a few more um, courses to go on capping uh, the existing concrete blocks, and then we're going to put some additional concrete blocks along the west side of the parking lot and extending out toward uh, where the old gate was and um, that will be some overflow parking uh, between those blocks and uh, the game fence uh, in that area uh, north of uh, Range Master's house. And um, let's see, then uh, another project is the drainage below the 22 Rimfire Bay uh, with the YDOT dirt work that, is, that took place uh, over the previous two years on the uh, slope. A lot of uh, dirt has been displaced and ran down up, uh, uh, lodged up next to the uh, uh, outside of the shop, and we need uh, we need to excavate and put in some drainage culverts, and that will that project will hopefully hopefully be starting week after next um, at the latest, and uh, that will be about a week's project. We will be we will will be if if we're able to open, it will not affect that project at all because he'll be he'll be working underneath the rimfire bay, not out uh, beyond the firing line. So that will not affect the range usage 
at all, but it will affect keeping the inside of the shop dry. So I'm sure Jim would appreciate that. And let's see, uh, trees and irrigation. So we had the uh, uh, 29 spruce trees put in. Um, the, uh, uh, we had some additional uh, dirt work that had to be done because the, the, the trees were put in, well, it wasn't the, wasn't the greatest job uh, putting them in. So we had a little bit of additional work on that. Uh, on top of uh, staking the trees and adding mulch and spraying for um, one of one of the one of the beetles, John Paul George Ringo, I don't know, uh, white 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 pine spruce beetle or something. The um, then we're also putting in irrigation to keep the trees uh, irrigated, and an irrigation system will also be put in on the yard around the range master's house as well. Um, and if you've, if you've driven by, you, you could see the house a little easier because they, one of the projects was to remove the aspen trees that were um, tearing up the porch, growing out from underneath the porch. So that, that has already been accomplished. And um, let's see, Bill, Holman was on here a minute. There he is. Okay, that's. Uh, I'll let Bill talk about the the shotgun um, things at, at a later date. But as that's end of my report. So thank you, uh, Bill. Did you did you want to add anything? Yeah, I had a little report here. Can y'all hear me? All right. Yep. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about, I know when Mark was talking about the donations, um, he said something about five, $150, I think it was. I just want to remind everybody so we can thank him. Randy Smith donated, I believe it was $2,500 to the new trap machine that was part of the projects that said that in the report was $9,000 and a lot of it was trap. 2500 of that was donated by Randy Smith for the new wobble trap. Um, also, five stand and trap are ready to go. Um, I spent the last couple weekends moving everything around. 22 Bay is set back to normal. Um, the wobble traps moved out of there. Everything is set up. <clears throat> I have a friend of mine that works with um, uh, Spectrum that is going to try to donate some batteries to us. We need about three new batteries. Um, let's see here. There are a couple things that I'd like to get to have on hand. Our antennas, the receivers that are on the trap machines with the sun have, a lot of those when we have birds that don't go when you push the button, um, I've determined that it's the antennas just sitting in the intense heat. Um, so I'd like to order some antennas. I called and spoke with uh, Promatic. They're $168 each. We don't really have to have three. I just wanted to, some of the problem machines wanted to replace those, but I would like to have at least one or two extra antennas. Same thing with the solar charger converters. The sun has deteriorated the wires to where bare wires are exposed. Um, makes me a little leery when fire season comes that there might, if they ever short it out, create a fire. So those are kind of on my priority. I need at least three of those. Those are $58 each from Promatic. Um, let's see. I did repo reposition the shotgun bay a little bit to um, the five stand to shoot more to the north so we could kind of start shooting a little bit earlier, especially if Shep starts able to bring customers in. We've been limited to about after one o'clock because of the sun so i've just kind of changed the five stand to shoot a little more north i do need a couple people like mark to go up there and maybe take a look and see what they think as far as the positioning safety wise things like that if we set a new tent up i just want to make sure that everybody is okay with that if anybody could take a look at that before our opening so i can reposition things again if, if they're not happy with it um we have enough birds with a soft opening. Um, you know, I think we can last about seven weeks. Um, 
So we need to think about that. I know we were talking about ordering some birds with other people and maybe getting a Conex, but I think we can get at least five to six pallets inside our shed that we have up there now. I've spent last winter cleaning out the whole shed. There's pretty much nothing in there except for Shep's little closet for guns. Um, so all that's cleaned out. Um, let's see. Um, that's about it. I, like I said, 22 bays ready to go back. All the tables are back where they were at. Um, so I think we're ready to go. Cool. Thank you, Bill. Thanks for all you've done for the shotgun. It's uh, really been nice. Um, no problem. My pleasure. Yeah. So I'm not sure how we should do this, but, you know, if, if there's only a few questions, we can just whoever yells the loudest can ask them. And if uh, everybody has a question, then maybe we should have some sort of rhyme or reason. So I guess we'll just start there. And uh, anybody that has any questions or comments, um, go ahead and unmute yourself and chime in. And oh, looks like Reverend Bot. Yeah, there's one. There's a question in the chat uh, from Ron. Uh, will the range be open initially to members only or to the general public? Jake, go ahead. Fair our, enough. And our, so, plan, our plan is to open for both members and, and guests. Yeah, which is the same rules. Yes. I, I, I should just add that everything that uh, Reverend Bott and I have put together, we've now sent forward to the board, uh, but the board hasn't actually met and approved all that. Uh, I think it's a good plan. Uh, uh, we'll see what others, others think, and I suspect it uh, will be approved, maybe with some minor modifications, but we're, we're close to an agreed protocol. Jake? Yes, sir. Um, and just re regarding the opening to the public as well, um, when I was speaking with Game and Fish, um, he gave a gentle reminder that we are to be open uh, to the public as a condition of our lease um, for a certain number of days per year. And so uh, we can take it under, under advisement as to if we maintain winter rules through the, you know, the, or the, sorry, the winter opening schedule through the summer. Um, and if we're short on public days, we can increase that in the winter. Um, of course, not many people will use it, but it, we just have to be open to the public. So, um, but that, that's something that we want to make sure that we honor because it was a, it was a gentle reminder that we have uh, uh, an obligation to be open a certain number of days to the public. Fair enough. Thank you very much. Other questions? We're good. So uh, any, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, is that, Bill? Oh, Bill, did you have something? Bill had a question. You're, 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 you're uh, still muted, Bill. I got gotcha. you. I can. Go. No. Nope. Can you hear me? Oh. Yep. All right. Uh, I was talking with Kyle, the game warden, the other day. He met me up there. I know there's um, – we had talked about the shed hunting on May 1st. And he – it's not a demand or anything from game commission. I, we just talked about the first day of opening and people coming out there. And this is the first time they've done it at noon on a Saturday, which will be the day of our opening. He had mentioned that it would be great – if we were reopening, like I said, he didn't, it wasn't a formal request from the game commission, but there's going to be people all over the hills up there looking for sheds. And he didn't know if we could postpone that till the second, that just something he thought about, you know, taking into consideration. I think it's already on the calendar. Okay. That's all I had. Other questions or Reverend Bottery seeing any other? Uh... Yeah, there's another comment uh, from Tony. Uh, I hope the board finds that wearing masks are to, to be a personal choice and not mandatory. And uh, then also, I believe it was stated that people were going to be asked to wear masks. So, um, so like, 
you know, Hank had mentioned it's we're, we haven't fully vetted the plan through the board, but um, so we'll get that dialed in and get that out. Um, best practice would definitely be to have masks. But as Hank pointed out, if you're two people on the range and you're 10 feet apart, it really, I mean, it's a little overkill. So I mean, we want to be reasonable and um, make sure that, you know, common sense prevails. But with the groups and stuff like that, we need to be as careful as we can. So we'll, we'll dial that in and get that out here um, sooner than later, especially if we can, you know, the county uh, mandate can get lifted and we can get back to some form of normalcy. So any other questions or comments or chat questions? No more chat questions have come in. Mm -hmm. Uh, any comments from uh, board members? Uh, Colin, we haven't heard from you or Tom, anybody? I'm not hearing you, Colin. Just static. Well, there you are, Colin. Now you, you, quiet, you quiet it out now, Colin. Uh, Tom, do you have any comments or anything? Oh, you're still muted, Tom. Sorry, your your mute button's still on. I'll, I'll get you, Tom. There you go. There you I go. got it. I, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing at this time. All right. And, Can and you guys Jim, hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we got you. Okay, I just wanted to say. Uh, how much I appreciate and, uh, and whatnot, how much time Bill has put in, um, to the, to the clays and the five stand and getting that running this winter. That was his idea. And, uh, I think a lot of people, a lot of board members and whatnot as well, really appreciated that. So I think that, uh, I personally want to throw that out there. Thanks. Yeah, we, a lot of thanks to everybody. I mean, it's a, it's a really great group and Lynn and Shep, and I know Scott Grower and Mark as usual have put in a ton of time and I, I, you know, there's a lot of people out there that I don't, don't, don't see cause I don't make it out as often as I want, but it's um, really, uh, really a great group. And the club is pretty amazing with the, what the last 15 or 20 years has brought and especially in the last five or 10, it's, it's an exciting place to be. And that hopefully using it um jim did you have anything to add again thank you for all your help doing a um, great job um the only thing that you know i know about the mask being mandatory but if i think the at least like sanitizer and stuff because everybody's gonna be handling the same target stands uh the same staplers uh doorknobs the bathrooms you know paper targets all that everybody's gonna be handling the same stuff so I mean, to me i mean you know, we do the rules if we do open they because we don't have it here and it's hard to get, so we probably got to supply their own. Fair enough. We'll, we'll get those rules dialed in for everybody, get them post on the website, maybe do an email blast, and then uh, um, try to get this soft open done as soon as we can. So anybody else, any other questions come up? Jake, I think I saw a question come across asking if we were going to credit the uh, uh, pro rata cost of the months we were closed to the memberships. Uh, probably the easiest way to do that would be to just extend everybody's membership by one or two months or whatever it turns out to be. Uh, but that's something the board could certainly take up. Yeah, you know, that hasn't come up, but it's a good question. And, and we will definitely talk about that at the next meeting. So whoever brought that up, thanks. Um, yeah. Shep, uh, I wanted to see if, if Shep had anything to say or or. Any, any comments, how things are looking, what kind of the positioning, anything like that? Or the one we really like, Lynn, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love you, Shep. Love you. Hope to see y'all soon. Uh, yep. At, what about for the, uh, for the shutdown for the water? Is, if, if it's that far out, do you have res you know do you have reservations on the books and whatnot at this point in time? Or are you just kind of rolling with those right right now? What's that situation look like? We're essentially 
just putting everyone on hold because we don't know, uh, you know, with the, as Hank explained the rules, we will still be shut down at that point. Um, so it would depend on how long those rules stay in effect. Um, and if, yeah, that, so we don't really know at this point. I mean, obviously our, our time to make hay is June, July, August. That's our biggest times and it will fall in that. And uh, such it is. Cool. Yeah, I would, just, I would just add a comment I think is important that we keep in mind here. Uh, I know enough about this virus and infectious disease uh, to know what I don't know. And frankly, that's a lot. Uh, not a lot is known about this virus. My guess, and it is a guess, is we'll be dealing with this for 18 months. Until we get a vaccine, uh, I think we're in trouble here and we're going to have to, for certainly members, certain members of the community, uh, we're going to have to be really careful. So I think we're going to be under uh, some common sense restrictions uh, to try to mitigate the risk of uh, of uh, transmission and particularly community acquired uh, transmission, probably for a period of 18 months, unfortunately. And to clarify, just so we have some, some good direction moving forward, should we, as uh, the people we shoot with are not household members, uh, should we just plan to shut down for 18 months? Well, I would hope not. Uh, that decision is going to be made by the virus, not by us. Uh, I think it depends on how things go. If uh, if we get a period of uh, uh, zero, one, two new infections per day, if the risk is low, I think then we ought to talk about reason what reasonable uh, safety rules would be. Uh, but I'm not optimistic, frankly. I think we're going to see uh, not not countrywide but we'll see in certain areas flare ups that will then be controlled. Uh, and it's gonna be a hard 18 months, but you know, our goal is to get you into operation, but I think we need to do so uh, safely and uh, in compliance with all laws and regulations. And just real quick, we'll make a, a huge effort in the next few days. We don't really have our next real board meeting isn't for a while, but you know, for the group and for Lynn and Shep and for, you know, anybody and with kind of the rules, we, we need to get together sooner than later and get this dialed in so that everybody can move forward. I mean, every minute something changes, there's some new thing, there's good news, there's bad news, but try to figure out something as, as, as good as we can so that people can start making good long-term decisions for themselves and for the club. And um, yeah, it just sucks. Uh, Bill? Yeah, I just, uh, not that I'm just agreeing with Hank, but working in the medical profession, this is something that working with a lot of the doctors and everything, this is going to be long term. It's going to be a new normal. Um, the coronavirus, we've been trying to come up with a vaccine for years. It's just, it's one of those things that's going to mutate and everything like that. It's just going to come down to basic safety, cleaning your hands things like that, high risk people need to be careful. This is something from the professionals that I work with that it will be a long-term thing. This is not gonna be over with in a month or something like that. We're just gonna have to find a new normal. And I know you guys are working on you know, new policies and things like that, um, something that we can work with. But like with Shep, I, I think that there's situations, usually when he has a group come in I know it's a little bit harder with the rifle bay, but like if they want to reserve shotgun bay, usually it's going to be a group of people that have already been together. Um, they're either staying in a motel together, they're a family group. Um, if he reserved that, you know, the coach could be masked, things like that. But those people are all good. I, I see where he could open up certain portions of it pretty easily. It's just going to be the new norm that we're going to have to, clean things down, things like that. And, have, you know, that's just the way it's going to be. Any other comments or questions? I think one thing, I know I read where a, a gun club, I think it's in Idaho, is open. 
I think they're an indoor range. So I might want to see like what they're doing to, to stay open and not, you know, and I guess they're staying busy. So maybe we can find out what they're doing to stay open and how they're handling it. Sounds good. Reverend, yeah. Bot, Reverend Bot, I thought I, I saw a question come across, but I can't yes. find it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. One more question on the back end of, of the uh, question that Jake asked, uh, Jake's iPad asked, um, not Jake Hansen. Uh, will members be credited for close, uh, close months? The comment or the question following that is, do you need volunteers for help? And um, when we get... Uh, to the point of, of this opening under these guidelines, I think it's going to be definitely needed uh, because, you know, Jim is the, is the range master and does a, a magnificent job, but getting people to, you know, help, helping eyeball people to remind them, you know, distance and, and things like that. Um, if, if members are able to donate a few hours, especially on the public days, um, it's gonna be a tremendous benefit uh, to to Jim, I I believe, um, and um, Jim might tell me I'm crazy and leave me alone. I'm going to go do what I want. So, but um, so thank you for that offer, Jake. And then uh, let's see from Scott Fossil to everyone. Um, agree with Henry. Some of us won't or can't shoot if people aren't willing to use the appropriate safe actions, i.e., masks. So. Those are the those are the comments that have yet to be addressed. Uh, like I said, we'll we'll get this discussion going. Like um, Hank and Reverend Bot put a lot of time into trying to figure out a way to get this thing open and make it safe and be able to you know do business and to shoot. So we'll uh, we'll get that in and we'll get that posted online and uh, out to maybe an email blast and and work with everybody that we can to, uh, again, try to get back to some form of normal here. Uh, any, any other questions or comments? Um, we do have uh, three board members that are um, up for election. It's Mark, Tom, and myself. So um, if Mark and Tom are willing to put another two years, I am as well. Um, so uh, I think Mark's nodding. Tom, are you in? I'm in. All right. A any um, other nominations from the floor, or questions or comments? I'll just assume that um, if anybody says no, you should wave, wave your hands a lot now. Otherwise, we'll uh, move forward with what we have and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So I don't have anything else. Um, really appreciate everybody coming and Again, hope that in the next uh, you know week or ten days we can actually be out doing something. So go ahead, Miss Reverend. Uh, Mark, I'm sorry, Jake. Are you uh, so? Is the uh, just just for clarification to cross the I's and dot the T's? Um, the current three board members that are up for re-election are elected by acclamation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That sounds good. I like that. Okay. <laughs> Just, Nobody said no, so we'll go ahead and move forward. Because <laughs> Hank's going to have to put something down on the minutes. So, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, we talked about an election, but yeah, we just moved on. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, like I said, my first election was with four year olds and it didn't go well. <laughs> uh, okay, guys. Well, thank you all again. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk soon. Okay, thank you, Hank and Jake. Yep. Thank, thank you all. Thank everyone. Thank you, thank you Thanks, all. Thanks, guys. Appreciate stay, it. Stay safe. Yes.